It was right after I first met your father. Big Boss. Back in 1964, I was ordered to take part in a CIA op called Operation Snake Eater, which concerned a new weapon the Soviets were developing at the time. My mission was to support a certain agent. That agent later became Big Boss, but I knew him as Snake. Snake? Yes, Naked Snake. That was his code name at the time, a name he would give to you, his son. The commander of this mission was a man called Zero, the head of Special Forces Unit Fox. Back then, I was working as a double agent for the Chinese. My objective was to secure the location of the Philosopher's Legacy, a massive cache of hidden wealth, and report it to Beijing. I was to acquire a microfilm showing the location of secret funds, funds amassed by the Allied powers during World War II. But I failed in my mission and was expelled from China. I took the apple from the snake and was cast out of Eden. After years on the run, I ended up in Hanoi. That's where I met him again. It was around then that Zero used the massive funds contained in the Philosopher's Legacy to start a new organization, the Patriots, which would carry out the final wishes of a certain legendary hero. The initial membership consisted of Big Boss, Sigint, paramedic, and their commander, Zero. Oh, and there was one more who we mustn't forget. He stayed behind in the Soviet Union to support the group as an informant, Ocelot, who is now liquid. After your father rescued me in Hanoi, I went to America and joined their organization. Zero's goal was to achieve a unity of thought and awareness. He believed that was what the boss wanted, and the rest of the Patriots followed his lead. The boss. The boss was a legendary hero from the Second World War, known as the mother of special forces. She had an almost overwhelming charisma about her. The CIA feared this, so they had her eliminated. If she had survived, the world of the 21st century might have been a very different place. We were all influenced by the boss's will. It was what drove us to create this organization, to be closer to that spirit. Zero decided that in order to lead the people, we needed a special kind of icon. So he turned to Big Boss, the last son of the boss. He shared more of her life than anyone else. It was Big Boss, the true heir to her legacy, who was best suited to play this role. Zero elevated Big Boss, the hero who saved the world, to the status of an idol. The truth behind Big Boss became riddled with exaggeration, misrepresentation, and outright lies. Zero disseminated these stories among the masses and gathered the rich and powerful to his banner. Every era needs its symbols to control the people, whether it be the stars and stripes, or the hammer and sickle. As the times and currents of politics changed, so too did Zero. Eventually, he became a prisoner of his own lust for power, sparking friction between him and Big Boss, who resented playing the puppet. With Big Boss drifting away, Zero realized he would need insurance. Something that would perpetuate the existence of Big Boss, their organization's icon. And so Zero secretly embarked on a new project. Les Enfants Terribles. Its goal was to create a clone of Big Boss, the ultimate soldier. The project was led by Dr. Clark, known at the time as Paramedic. After dozens of failures, they finally, miraculously, succeeded in producing a fertilized egg. The egg used in the successful in vitro fertilization came from Dr. Clark's assistant, a healthy Japanese woman. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Give birth to Big Boss. To realize this, I asked to serve as the surrogate mother and was more than happy to carry you in my womb. 
I loved him. Nine months later, I gave birth to two big bosses, you and Liquid. It didn't matter that you were clones or that they had manipulated your DNA. You were born the same way as any other normal child from your mother's womb. But Les Enfants Terribles proved to be the final straw for Zero and Big Boss. Determined to oppose Zero and his plans, Big Boss broke away from the Patriots. He left the States, created his own mercenary company, and drifted around the world. I'm sorry. Your father never wanted you. Human life isn't meant to be manipulated like that. I knew that, but I wanted you. After Big Boss left, Zero really lost control. What Zero wanted was an orderly world, one governed by rules. His fortune grew through countless wars, and his words influenced decision-making all the way up to the Oval Office. As the world saw the rise of digital technology, IT, the internet, and genetics, the Patriots' power grew immense. Their roots spread and took hold throughout the globe. In time, they began to dictate the fate of entire nations from the shadows. And before we knew it, the Patriots, the proud police of the world, started bringing an entire planet under their control. Their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. And their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their Cold War. <laughs> Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path. And grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the US with a plan in mind and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Solid Snake, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father 
was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything, nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally, Ocelot and I plan to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, also known as Sigmund, to death, and made it look like an accident. The Shadow Moses incident. With paramedic and Sigmund dead, Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then, someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend that would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. <laughs> this is his picks. His holy ark. is alive, but his consciousness is locked away by nanomachines. So technically speaking, he's not really brain dead. 
We can't allow Liquid to inherit the same sins that corrupted Zero. Manipulating people's minds for the sake of his own ego. What happened? She's gone. She's not in the Nomad anymore. When? Less than an hour ago. She disappeared right after she and Sonny got back from Dr. Madnar's place. Why weren't you watching her? I... Uh, I didn't have my glasses on. Naomi said it herself. The experiment can't succeed without her. You think she went back to Liquid? <sighs> what about Bryden? Good news on that front. We managed to get our hands on a dialysis machine and set up an ICU. We just started him on dialysis and treatment for his wounds. Will he live? Yeah, no worries there. Sonny's taken over for Naomi. But his treatment's probably gonna take 48 hours. Until then, Raiden can't move. Hey you! Come here! Is that? Move! Found us. We're moving out. Snake, the PMCs are converging on your location. Damn it! They're sending in Gecko! They'll be on you in less than five minutes! Are they ready? Yes, ma'am. We'll escape through the canal route using the real van. Get it ready. Hurry! Yes, ma'am. Snake, over here. We've got decoy vans set to draw some of our pursuers away. They work in arms factories, and when they grow up, they want to join a PMC. They seek revenge on other companies, PMCs that killed their parents, and use their earnings to support their younger siblings. There are countless child soldiers like these in the PMCs. Nowadays, anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. Of course, it's all just virtual training. It's so easy for them to get absorbed by these war games. And before they know it, they're in the PMCs holding real guns. These kids end up fighting in proxy wars that have nothing to do with their own lives. They think it's cool to fight like this. They think that combat is life. They don't need a reason to fight. After all, for them, it's only a game. Zero is the cause of all this. Defeating Liquid won't change things. Unless we stop the Patriot system, the cycle will go unbroken. Hop on. With so many wars being waged, oil and biofuel have become as precious as diamonds. It's been a while since I went out for a ride. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or fall dead. Big Mama. 
Call me Eva. to keep Big Boss's body out of enemy hands, no matter what. Get the body safely to the canal escape room.
Stay with me. Eva, I need you. Oh, is that you? Mother's work is never done. Mama. She'll be coming to search the van. I'll take care of it. You stay here. Keep watch. I'll contact the children. Here. Take this. Snake. Come back in one piece. I will. Uh, promise me.
out of there, Snake!
gonna try to grab you. Way to bring that bird down, Snake. Drebin. And you got yourself a souvenir, too. A grenade launcher. Nice. That's a real user-friendly weapon. Not much use to me without an ID, though. I laundered this one free of charge. What's the catch? Only that you give it to me when you're done with it. A weapon with that many decades of rage stored up inside it? Now that's a collector's item. How old was she? I'd say about 20. But she had years of soldiers' rage hidden away in that youthful body of hers. Soldiers? Yeah, the soldiers of Ake. A place that hasn't seen peace in a long, long time. She was captured by one side or another, and kept caged up like an animal, along with God knows how many other kids. Anonymous violence. Exactly. It's unknown whether her captors were with the government or the rebels. In any case, they got their kicks by abusing these helpless little kids day after day after day. That constant barrage, that battlefield rage slowly built up inside their bodies, their minds. The kids tried to keep each other's spirits up, always clinging to the hope that someone would come to their rescue, barely surviving off of scraps of food. But those soldiers didn't stop. They called the kids parasites and shit-eating ravens. Beat them even harder. Then one morning, the soldiers just up and left, leaving the surviving kids to be eaten alive by the birds. Almost like one of those sky burials. One by one, their bodies were picked apart by ravens' beaks, until finally the flock came for her. But by some miracle, their beaks cut her bonds instead. And like that, she was liberated. But in that instant, she was filled with an uncontrollable rage, and it smothered her soul. She ripped the ravens pecking at her to pieces, and then went after the soldiers. And when she finally caught up with them, she waited until nightfall like a hunter awaiting its prey. 
They say that when a raven cries, a man dies. And that's exactly what happened that night. Screeching and cawing, she killed every last living being in the camp. Both the soldiers and the civilians they'd enslaved. In her eyes, there was no longer a difference. The cruelty her friends had suffered. The pain and humiliation she'd endured. Hers was the distillation of the rage that decades of war had imparted on those soldiers. Mm. It was her strength. And her greatest weakness. You're something else, Snake. You managed to cleanse Raven of her rage. No, seriously. You're the seed of war. In fact, I'd say you might even be war itself. Draven. Maybe it's still too early to tell. You've still got half the B&B core ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball, pal. I have to apologize. The three vans that came out with us are decoys. Uh, uh, the real one is floating down the river, headed downstream. I managed to get in touch with the children. The Pix is safe. We're going to rendezvous on the riverbank downstream. Land and air routes are cut off. Oh, but there's a cruiser waiting for us. The Volta River is our only chance of escape. Oh, let's get out of here. Hurry. Good thinking. Uh, oh, oh. need to feel the wind anymore. There's no need to keep lying to myself. I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or...